All right. So welcome everyone to the uh, February 23rd, 2016 Central Line School Committee meeting. We have a uh, pretty brief agenda tonight. Um, and uh, so uh, I'll start with the, the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Oh, I can't. You, you are here. <laughs> I was the other one. Take a motion to accept the minutes. Do right. you want to do both sets? Uh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah, for the, for the special meeting on the 10th. Yeah. Also the 19th, January. Okay. Any discussion? Any second? second. Oh, yeah, we didn't. I'll oh, second. All right, thanks. Discussion? All in favor? So Four one zero. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <coughs> <how do> you... <coughs> okay. So tonight you have your budget for January, and there are a few things that I'd like to bring to your attention. Um, first, um, we have seven warrants for you to sign tonight in the amount of sixty thousand. Nine hundred and sixty-three dollars and um, five cents. Uh, so on page uh, five, if you go oh, page three, let's start with page three. I'm sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. Uh, one, two. The third one down, our textbooks and related software is over by thirty-three twenty seventy-five. I'm going to research some of this to see if some of this, if there is software in there that should be in our instructional software line. Um, and then on page four, our instructional hardware line is over. We had budgeted for our lease payments and then a, an additional smart board was um, purchased and um, we were hoping that, because it was needed, um, and we are hoping we'll have some savings to cover that. Um, also on page four, uh, we have a transportation $3,300 we're over 1260. We have one student who needs to be chaperoned on the bus. This is not something we budgeted for. So <clears throat> we're tracking it separately so we can see how much it's going to cost us annually. But we will we do have money in the transportation account to cover this. So I'm not concerned. And then also on page four, our custodial salaries is over and it looks like um, we're running some overtime and Mr. Barshevsky and I had a conversation today and he's going to begin monitoring the reasons and actually um, putting in, having the custodians put in a request that the overtime be pre-approved so that we know what the, um, what the overtime is being used for. And on page five, um, the, the building and security system, I think I told you this before, this is something that we've always carried in our building maintenance repairs and it takes up a good size of our budget so we want to get it its own line item. So again, we broke it out. So to, in total with all of those things we are over um, $15,602. And I'm not I'm not overly concerned at this point because I am we've had a mild winter, um, not right this minute, but previous to this. So I'm hoping that there will be some heating savings to cover those costs. On page seven is our transportation, and um, the town of Sunderland will be receiving a check in the amount of five hundred and thirty-four dollars and seventy-four cents. That was for the fuel adjustment clause for FY15. Um, it was calculated late, and so the money must get returned to the general fund. Um, but this year, we will have some savings because through January, our fuel adjustment savings has been $4,982.97. So um, with the, uh, and, and I'm calculating we're gonna have some savings in SPED transportation. So. The savings, uh, the fuel adjustment to date, that's seventy-four hundred minus that 1260 we saw on stipends, we're still up about six thousand dollars. So I'm not concerned um, about that. Uh, the next page is our school choice, and right now, um, based on what we had approved for a budget, we're going to be overspending by about six thousand dollars. 
Uh, and that's because we had some leaves and we had to hire substitutes that we had planned on. And when the person leaves, we charge the same line for the, because they're long-term subs, they're not dated. We try to keep our substitute line on the day-to-day -day subs so that we can track how many days uh, versus a long-term sub assignment. Uh, the next page is Circuit Breaker, and um, we have 4,374.34 that we have to use this year, and that's what we're budgeting in here um, to use so that we'll be at zero. Page 10 and page 10 and page 11, we, again, we had discussed these before. These are revolving funds. So we're over on our budgets, but we're also over in our revenues. So it looks like we're over in our budgets, but we do have the revenues coming in to support that. So we've just been using money um, that was not budgeted um, previously. So we're in good shape there, um, unless anyone has any questions. So did you say this? we're saving 7400 on fuel costs? Is that for busing? Yes. So when we went out to bid, um, this is our second year, there, we set the fuel price. And then if it changed up by $0.10 cents or below by $0.10, cents, either we would owe the bus company money or they would owe us. Mm -hmm. And when we signed the contract, it was three sixty-four, and it's about a dollar sixty-four right now. Yeah. So we're saving a lot of money in fuel. Okay. So that's a good thing. And then a little bit of plowing too. We well, we don't. Uh, the town yeah, provides the t the plow, <coughs> so that's not something that we budget for. Okay. But it has been a, a warmer uh, winter yeah. overall, so savings in fuel. Any other questions or discussion? Give people a second, they're still plowing. Hmm? If you ever okay. think, if you see something afterwards, please email me. And we can talk about it in the next month or I'll, you know, usually when one committee person sends me an email, I'll respond to everyone. So you'll know that I was, I received a question and here is the answer so that you all have the same information. Yeah. Informative stuff we can do by email. Uh, that, you know, it's, Anytime it's, you it's can still, ask a question. Right. Yeah. We can't deliberate by email. Right. But, right. You but can't course, respond to it and discuss it. And have a discussion right. that's, you know, in the realm of deliberation or whatever. But yeah. Yep. Did you get uh, Greg a budget? He did. Greg, did you get? Did I give you a budget last night? No. Uh, I have, did you have one from the previous meeting? Because it did. Previous meeting, draft number two. Yes, yes. it yeah. hasn't changed. Okay. So um, thank you, and uh, I'm make sure we get up the warrant sign. I have one at seven point seven. I'm yeah. not seeing any public, so uh, this one pass over business. the public comment. Yeah, and right. so, unfinished business is the um, discussion of the proposed FY17 budget, and uh, continue discussion. So, um, and uh, as you all know, and some of you were there, uh, we have the. Presentation mm -hmm. to the select board last night. And the finance subcommittee. And the finance subcommittee, thank you, yes. Um, and so they have it, and uh, they asked some, you know, good questions, but they think they understood, uh, you know, the picture, and that um, it's not like, uh, you know, we're we're not throwing in <laughs> new stuff here. This is it's just it's it's maintaining what we're doing and um, and the cost of that um, uh, you know is what we're looking at. So I have to say I sat with that finance well select board mm -hmm. <clears throat> and two of those members have been on the finance committee for a long time yes. for fifteen years. Yeah and. They asked so few questions. 
last night. And I, and I would like to think it's because they very much understood what the budget entailed and that they respected the numbers. Um, I know this is on camera, but it was almost unnerving. I kept waiting for, <laughs> for some of the questions to, right. to right. be forthcoming. And, um, well, we're in a bit of a different position this year because we're asking for the state minimum. I mean, we don't have much of a choice. If we don't spend the net school spending, then the town risks losing the Chapter 70 funding. Yeah. And I think they understood that. Right. Yep. But presenting that large of a percentage of an increase... I do think it was softened by the fact that there is a likelihood, depending upon what we do with Frontier, that there will be a negative cost to the town of Sunderland for the regional budget. And in the past, that has not always been the case. You know, there's been a three to five percent increase in the elementary and anywhere from a three to seven or eight percent increase mm -hmm. on the region. And so this year, that's very different. It will be a negative increase. That's a negative, yeah, a negative increase. Yeah, Not like return an to oxymoron. <laughs> but um, so the assessment coming from Frontier to will lower. Is actually It'll be dropping. If, right. if, depending so on what it, Frontier budget does, there they could actually save four thousand dollars from what they were assessed last year. Right. And there was an effort on our part to come in lower. And yes. The state dictated that we actually had to raise our. Correct. 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 Our original budget that we submitted wouldn't, even that we submitted with the end of the year report. So when um, the end of the year report was filed, I used the FY16 budget on Schedule 19. And they, you make sure that you are in net schools compliance for the 15 year and that your budget looks like it's in compliance. When the report was accepted, we were in compliance. But what happened was in December, they do the charter and choice numbers. Our charter and choice numbers, gratefully, are down. Last year, we had 18 children out on choice. We have eight this year. Last year, we had four kids out on charter. We have zero. So what they had originally estimated to be charter and choice tuition, which is added towards the net school spending, is gone. So that money now has to be returned to the elementary school because the assumption is if they're not out there, they're back here. And what was hard for them, well, it wasn't hard for them. What, you know, what we explained is, yes, you're going to have to pay a little bit more to meet your net school spending. However, you're not being charged a larger amount had those students still been going out through charter and choice. It's still a saving. So, Which they got. They, they did they get. They completely got. Yeah, and they understood that. Um, so it was a good news. It really was a good news scenario because it would have been many more dollars had those students gone out. It just wouldn't have been included in the school budget. They would have gotten a separate bill mm -hmm. for it. So, so we have this meeting mm -hmm. and then we have your public hearing. Um, the only thing I had cautioned the committee and, and to keep, you know, we'll work with Ben to, is we have this bubble in the fourth grade enrollment. Right now it's at 28. Mm -hmm. This budget reflects an additional teacher um, so we would have go from current 11 sections to 12 sections. If for some reason that number drops or stays the same and we have to make a tough decision by reducing one class, um, you know, that can be done. But the other cautionary tale I, I said was be careful if you add that 12th classroom to not overly backfill it with school choice, because if you then suddenly lose two or three resident students and you've backfilled it with school choice, you're stuck with those two sections for the next two years. But fourth, go, I mean, going so fourth going into fifth. Fourth going into fifth, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, the bulk of the choice that we get. You never is, know, it's it's really kind it's of funny. Really well, you, not, not that we don't get kids in older <laughs> grades, but you know, when we open up a kindergarten, for example, and, and maybe and and the first grade, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we've had eight or ten or you know those kind of numbers. Right. Where if we opened up fifth grade, you know, even if we said we would take that many, which we wouldn't, I don't think. But if if we did, um, I doubt we would 
get that kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I, typically I, we get we usually get a request at every grade level. However, at the younger grades, it, it is usually yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you're going to get you know a couple. Yeah. Right. So yeah. right. Um, and it really depends what's happening in the other schools. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a very large class in another school. <clears throat> they are very tempted by a class yeah. of 14 as opposed to a class of 26. Right. And they could move. So, you know, everything is sort of dependent. Well, we'll get through the, I mean, we'll get through the budget before we need to, well, yeah. probably before we're making that call on the choice numbers. Sure, absolutely. We've typically voted on school choice slots in April. Right. I'd, I'd be comfortable pushing that back to even May this year. Mm -hmm. yeah, April um, is our joint meeting. Yeah, in fact, this last year we did it in May because we mm -hmm. had the joint meetings. Okay. Um, it got a little tricky when we were all meeting in and, different and spots. And families from here. are applying for school choice. We're, we're sending them a, a letter recognizing that we received their application, yep. but say decisions usually aren't made until June. Yeah. So, right. yeah, so we have time. The only other thing I do want to say about this budget is when we, and I will get it to you early, um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to make, the, our bottom line numbers aren't going to change, but some of our line items are going to change. Um, one of the things that had um, changed after we made this document was when we, last year when we added um, our technology integration specialist for the five schools because it was a new position, we charged each school 20%, and some schools felt that that was inequitable. Um, so this year, after having half a year of um, services, Scott and I, uh, Scott Paul, our IT director, and I sat down and with with Maureen, our, our, our specialist, and the allocation method was changed to number of instructional teachers in each school, and that's how it's parsing. So Sunderland's didn't change a lot. You're almost like right there. It was like 9,900, and now you're like 10-1. So I'm going to be moving some line items. I'm also concerned. I, I don't want to say concerned. For ease of reporting, I'd like to take the teachers, the classroom teachers that are on the school choice budget, put them on the local appropriated budget, and then take some of our, our instructional assistants and put them on the school choice budget. So like I said, the bottom line numbers aren't going to change, but I'm going to be changing some line numbers. So our summary of changes could be looking a little different, but I will get that out to you at least a week before so that you can see the details of what changed. And I will, and I will have the narrative there at that time too. Um, so that's like the only thing that's missing is I usually have the narrative, um, but knowing that I had to move some lines around, I did not present it tonight. Um, and I will get that to you that makes, as soon as possible. What would be the rationale for this, this way? Because the, 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 our, these are, usually the school, when, when school choice, when we started the school choice, it was, it was more, we looked at it, and I wasn't here then, Keith, but the, the, what I've been told from the history, it was like the ancillary services we brought back, the music, the art, the Spanish, but now we've got classroom teachers. Classroom teachers should truly not, it's not a school choice item, it's, it, it's a classroom teacher. It should be on our local appropriated budget. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's easier to report um, I, on the end of the year report, if all our teachers are together, it looks that it, our, our statistics for average teacher salaries comes out. They don't have to go to six different places. It's all in one place. So it's, it's just easier to read because then you'll, you're truly seeing in one spot what is our, te our instructional teaching, which is the core of our mission here, what that cost is. Right now, you look at the local budget and you think we're spending whatever that, what, like 600,000, whatever that number is, but there's probably 300 over on, on, on the school choice. And I want, I want you to see truly the number and cost of, of our teaching staff. Makes sense. School choice when 15, 18 years ago when it came about, I mean, we were buying computers. I mean, nobody ever would have dreamed of attaching any portion of a salary to school choice. It was a very nominal fee. We were talking very small numbers. And it was only when we started getting into double digits and it became a real dollar amount that there was a lot of pressure on school committees from the townspeople to say, 
you're sitting on $50,000, you're sitting on $75,000. You better start off setting your budget. And I understand that. Um, but that is my con always been my concern, that slippery slope. Yeah. Because it, it is, it's misguided to think about what your actual budget is when you have salaries attached to it because it's very misleading. Well, it's, right, and we're on that slippery slope right now yeah. because, we're, you know, we're, we're having to use more than a, you know, a year's We're not worth. in a year in arrears now. Right. And so, you know, we've got to find a way to back out of doing that, which obviously is, this isn't a good year to, right. to try to do that. Um, but it, you know, it, it's, it won't be sustainable. And, and, and then, you know, if there's a, you know, a, a change, we, you know, a grade graduates that has a lot of choice kids um, that had two classrooms and then we have an incoming mm -hmm. Where we're gonna have one class and no choice. I mean, you know, well, in that case, maybe, you know, we're right. dropping down a classroom um, and it, it works out. But anyway, you know, and we're certainly setting yeah. ourselves up for some risk of all right. of a sudden losing a lot of choice money uh, and, you know, not having anywhere, you right. know, not having, right. not, it's not like, okay, well, we just won't buy those computers, computers right. or whatever right. this right. year. Right, those but, extras, well, yeah. That, that was paid for. Right. That's been for a teacher and so a budget. So right. each year since I've been here, and especially since Marty came aboard, we have been trying to get this document to be more and more useful for you. So what I would like to do, like my next, my, my next goal, is how we, 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 right now I'm reporting the other funding on a totally separate page. But what I'd like to do is be like, yeah, we'd probably be on legal paper, but so for whatever category it is, you would see the grant money, the school choice money, the tuition revolving, so that you'll totally see what we're spending for instructional assistance, what we're totally spending for our teachers, what we're totally spending for maybe SPED services, because you never see the whole picture in one line item. And that's what I'm trying to get this budget to be so that you guys can say, this is a, the true cost of the school. I mean, this is what the town provides us, but this is our other funding. And right now, we look at it on two different pages, and you don't even know what those fun how those funds are classified. Are they SPED? Are they regular education? Are they instructional materials? Are they are they personnel? And I want you to be able to see that. And that's awesome. And and, and I agree. Like it's just gotten better and better. And, and that would be super too, because so many you know every year I'm kind of like. Piecing. piecing that together. And, and then he always calls me and says, could you do a six-year analysis? And I'm like, I haven't been here six years, God. Uh, I've been holding that back so far this year, you know, this, but I do have a little request. Not that I mind. That's my job. That's what I'm here for. It's just difficult to, to go back 10 years when you haven't been here 10 years and try to figure out how someone else classified something as to how you classified it. So it's always a little disparity. The other thing, too, I just want to pass on. I feel like a mother who's trying to prepare her children to go off to high school. And I, I have to impart all this information to you before I go. But no, that's how I feel. So the other thing I want you to watch <clears throat> is your population. So when I get the census data, um, I just got it the other day. Census for school age attending children as of January 2016, K through 12, for Sunderland was 386 students. Last year, it was 330. The year before was 380. Now I can keep going back, but this is the roller coaster. So just when you think there might be a trend, it's gonna take you by surprise. And a lot of it has to do with your housing. It has to do with how many students are at UMass, how many students are availing themselves of housing at UMass and are needing ancillary housing out here. Especially graduate students yep. with families. Yep. So you have to watch that and you, it, you have to be very careful in Sunderland in particular. The others are like flat line. I mean, Conway is like this. You know, Deerfield's sort of like this, Waitley's like this. But Sunderland is like a bouncing ball. <laughs> and you just have to be careful not to make quick decisions based on information at hand without going back because you may regret it. And the, I think too, and I think what, the other thing that's really interesting is when we had the NESDEC study done, 
Everybody's sort of following those trends, except Sunderland. Except Sunderland. Yep. Yeah. They're saying that Nesdaq <coughs> that Nesdaq study said you two would be going down, 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 and you're not you're going up, up, up. Well, we don't look well, like for this year, right? And who knows next year, right? Because when I looked at it, there was no correlation. So if they had 48 kindergartens one year, you'd expect the subsequent first grade. Well, then it dipped down to 33. I mean, it just. There was absolutely no rhyme or reason to the pattern. So you have a lot of people moving in, moving out, as Ben can attest to on unless a we weekly can start basis. To di unless we can start getting some <coughs> data from UMass saying, how many graduate students do you have with families who are retiring I know. in Sunderland, and how long is their degree program? <laughs> so it, it, it is a, a fascinating moving ball. So, Mr. Chair, what is your pleasure? Do you want to... Um, have us go back and look at anything else? Or are you all satisfied with this to go forward to a public hearing next month? I'm, personally, I think that's it's the budget we should bring t to the public hearing, short of there, you know something all of a sudden popping out that what didn't pop right, out before. Right. Um, I don't know if there's any other discussion of that or thoughts about that. Um, I get the feeling like there's not a lot that can be done with the budget at this point. There isn't. <laughs> I mean, there is very little that we could do. Yeah, we could maybe cut out a few thousand dollars for a little bit of stuff, but there's so little stuff in here to begin with. Mm -hmm. Well, we really can't um, cut anything because we have to spend what the state's telling well, us. Well, that's yeah, true. Right. That, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. right. I mean, that's the other you piece of it. And, and, line items. Really. And I think that was... So I think, I think the select board... Uh, and finance subcommittee understood both pieces of that. Both like this is a good responsible budget, and we don't have a lot of choice on you know unless we don't want to jeopardize eight hundred thousand and yeah in that State. chapter seventy money. Right. So um, so yeah, I think we go to the public hearing and and um, go from there. And it's you know it's going to be up to the town to. Any uh, talk that you've heard throughout the community for those of you who live here as far as concerns? It's been pretty quiet as far as this. I think because there's no major changes, we're not recommending any cuts of any kind of personnel or programs or mm -hmm. right. um, that, yeah. And I haven't heard any clamoring. I don't know if you have been from parents or staff wanting to institute new programs. No. Okay. I, I think the, the staff with the increase in the budget is happy that there really aren't any, any cuts. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's something that the message they conveyed from the start. You know, they'd, they'd rather take a hit in the general supplies item mm -hmm. over losing, losing a staff member. But so. the way it seems with the school population, we can't lose a staff member. Oh, absolutely. Oh, right. Not. Right, so that's... Well, it would, well be an, and, it would probably be an instructional assistant, not right, a teacher. Right. We'd have to do it. Combining the fourth grade into, into, into one. That would be, I mean, I think that's, again, like, we'd be facing the, the check, the, you know, not being in compliance with the mm -hmm. <laughs> foundation budget and the net school spending. But, um, you know, it, and I don't know how that would play out, but if, you know, if the money wasn't... Um, uh, vote, you know, the budget, whatever, in town meeting doesn't c come through what we're proposing and we had to do less. I mean, that's probably one of the options on the table is to make a really big fifth grade. You know, we've had to do that before and yeah. I, I hope we don't have to do that. One of my year, disappointments, and I know now this year your town meeting does not happen on the Friday of April break. And it's the first yeah. year of a long, in a long time. You're not the first meeting. <laughs> um, and actually, that's good because I've always been very disappointed in the number of, of yeah. parents of school age children who come out. And they're the ones that are most affected. And I can look around the room and usually count on one hand the number of parents. And I know it's a Friday night, but this year, not being on school at the end of school vacation week, I don't feel there's a lot of excuses for people not to come out um, because things happen on town floors. And then people go, oh my goodness, I, I yeah, had no I, idea. Yeah, I, 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 I should have went. So, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. 
So I, I always encourage school committees, you know, to get parents who have students in the school, have children, yeah. to come and support the budget. Do we have communication going home to parents as well in that regard? You can't encourage them yeah. to, PTO could, could notify them. Mm -hmm. Right. And usually that's what PTOs do. Sometimes PTOs will offer free child care, um, things like that. Last year, I, I sent out a notice that on such and such a date is our annual town meeting. One of the topics being discussed is the school budget. Yeah, I mean, just, right. yeah, just something you like that. Do yeah, that. you can't. They'll do the same this year. Okay. And people have always used the school vacation week factor as a reason, and I get that because a lot of people do go away. Mm -hmm. But this and year, now it's, you guys can. <laughs> now you, yes. And, I know the first year that Darius was principal and I said, you have to come to Friday. What do you mean, Friday <laughs> during school vacation? I said, yes. <laughs> but, but not this year. Yeah, this year you're the last. No, no. the third. Conway will always oh, Conway's be Conway's in May, in that's May. right, they've gone So it'll May. be Deerfield Monday night, Waitley Tuesday yeah. night, you guys on Friday night, and then the first Monday in May. <clears throat> that's right, I forgot they Conway. switched. Only been here four years and I got my schedule down. <laughs> and they changed it because Conway used to be first. They were always in March. All I right. I was thinking. Um, uh, just for um, the, the spring, maybe, um, I don't think it, it makes sense for the this time in the board the budget hearing or anything like that, but, but uh, to talk about the horizons like the the financial how the, how it's worked out financially for horizons i think mm -hmm. you know i think it's you know keeping kids yeah, i think we're all in agreement document. uh you know about it. it's wonderful keeping the kids in mm -hmm. you know in their local school um and so there's that side of it but i think also financially <laughs> um you know there's a there's a good story our, to be told yeah, as our, well our so. fed director has offered too to come if you wanted her to come in may yeah um, to talk about that program. And so to look at like, here's what we were having to spend before, right. Right. Um, you know, and here's, you know. <clears throat> well, and, and just so you know, that's why I've added it because it is under your purview. That's what I'm and, right. and And I do want to be able to, when I send mm. this out to you, you're gonna have your school choice budget, <clears throat> you're gonna have the the horizons what we feel is the tuition and what we're going to use those tuitions for just like we do the school choice mm -hmm. those will be in there in the next budget round because it, it just it, it, it you are in charge of all funds right so they the the it's what the our sped director is proposing to utilize the funds for so but it, it you you do need to authorize those budgets and um in the past we haven't done that and we really need to do that so those will be there yeah would you like me to ask her to come in May? Just as Kim McCarthy was here. Yeah, I think we so. talked about the early childhood. That would Is be that great. Something. If you guys... Just do a brief yeah, presentation. Like okay. In May. Yep. Yeah, but I think you're right. It's one of those things where it's like uh, a lot of people who are passionate about special education and early intervention. Go out. They talk about it from the kids' point of view, but it's also good fiscal policy. Right. You know, even if you mm -hmm. don't care about kids, even, right, you're saving right. money. Even if right. that wasn't the goal, right. that it's right. good to hear that story too. Okay. Because it's true, Greg. If right now with the with the student population that we are serving um, in this program, if any one of them had to go out, um, the current May Center tuition and that's the the facility they would go to is one hundred and ten thousand dollars per student for a day program. And that doesn't count like twenty k in busing, the transportation. Plus, we have to pay for the busing. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's in West Springfield, so that's a pretty <coughs> hefty transportation bill. Yeah. And from my understanding, that's a significant factor at the high school level. Yes. Right, but those were kids that, um, those were children that were never yeah. in um, in our in any programs because because that's one of the the things that our sped director now has done is she's built these programs to keep our children. So no elementary school right now has any child in an out of district program. The only ones we have are the ones that were inherited that are at the high school level. 
So right. we will keep, we'll continue okay. with this budget and yep. present it at the March public hearing? Okay. Do we, uh, should we, do we need to? You don't want to vote, no, you no, don't want to vote until. We don't want to vote anything no. until after the right. public, public that, hearing. The, the right. Public hearing, but yeah. Um, all right, so uh, that's it for unfinished business, no new business. So reports, any committee reports? Do you have one, Ben? Yeah. So then, yeah, we're on to Ben. No, we don't do that. Great. We have hired a new instructional assistant in kindergarten, Radha Pesapati. Um, she has been a sub in our district for the past couple of years, and um, we had a, a previous um, instructional assistant take another job um, in a local district, so that's where that opening has been created. Um, not included on this list, our band teacher, Megan Carr, um, just gave birth to an additional uh, member of her family. And so Kelsey Gray is the long-term sub in, in that position. Um, we just recently honored Jeff, Chief Jeff Gilbert and Chief Bob Ahern with an all-school sing um, to honor their re retirement. Each class performed a various skit or a song, and it was really a lovely event. Uh, combined, Chief Gilbert and Chief Ahern um, served our town of Sunderland for 54 years and uh, it's um, we're really appreciative of of what they've done for us and also the um, the amount of time they spent um, at our school doing kind of put a, a a face and a name to the police chief and, and fire chief positions in town both yeah big supporters of the school absolutely in various ways both with their time and you know, supporting us in, in town meetings and so on. So. And they have been for decades. Yeah. I mean, especially Bob, I knew when he'd bring the fire truck back 20 years ago oh, yeah. when I was here. Yeah. And let the, I don't know if he still does that, but they bring the truck and the kids would. We haven't done chance. that in a few years. Yeah. But that would be something. Yeah, it was fun. It was, yeah. it was a big event. Yeah. <laughs> we all have a chance to go on the fire truck. That's great. Uh, recently, a group of sixth grade students joined other Union, 830s, thir Union 38 students on a trip to the Holyoke Soldiers Home for to deliver Valentine's Day cards. This is a, a yearly trip that takes place, and uh, students made Valentine's Day cards in their art classes and uh, went down to the Soldiers Home and spent some time. Um, additionally, we had Natasha Lowe, who is a local author. She's from Deerfield. Um, she's written a number of children's books. Um, one of the more well-known ones is The Power of Poppy Pendle, which is about a, uh, a witch. And so she, she came in and spoke with the kids. Um, and, and it was interesting. We held an author's tea later in the day with a number of the students who had read a certain amount um, to qualify for that event. And during that time, and also during her live presentation to all the classes, she talked about what it looks like to be a good writer. And we found that many of the, many of the things the students are doing in our classes here, she, she does at home as well. So that, that was a good message to, to convey. Um, additionally, we've had uh, our second round of Cafe Sun. The sixth grade had a Tar Wars presentation. We had International Night. Kindergarten went on a field trip to the Discovery Center. Our fourth grade went to Northfield Mountain um, for, which is one of their annual science field trips. We have a, a lot of uh, events coming up as well tomorrow, weather dependent. We have our frosty fun run. Um, next week, presidential primary voting is taking place during the school day in the gymnasium. Next Wednesday, we have uh, Read Across America Day, which is in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday. We have a number of student athletes from Amherst College coming in to read to the kids on that day. Uh, school council meeting coming up on March 11th. We have a Jay Mankita concert, who is a local musician. 
This is uh, brought to us by the Sunderland PTO. March 12th, Saturday, March 12th, we have the Man Cake Breakfast, which coincides with the annual um, Sunderland Rec Basketball Tournament. Um, report cards around two in March, and then we have our first round of MCAS, and it's ELA MCAS from March 30th to April 7th. You also notice that on April 12th, we've scheduled Arts Night. April 28th, we have Family Fun Night. There's a number of visitation days um, coming up in May for both kindergarten and preschool. Sixth grade field trips, fourth grade field trips. May 27th, we have our Sunderland in Action Day, which is when um, the kids stop classes for a little while and go out into the community and perform community service projects. Junior Olympics, uh, the sixth and seventh, and then sixth grade graduation is June 8th. Wow. Our last day of school right now <clears throat> is Monday, June 13th, and that's a half day. So we'll see how that works out. And this, uh, it, it, the, the list looks kind of long right here but it, it's gonna fill up even more. And you know, it seems like after February break each year, it just flies by with all the events that get scheduled. Any questions? <clears throat> yeah. Business journey. What time are you doing your uh, sixth grade graduation this year? We haven't picked a time yet. Okay. Um, so it's that night though. You are gonna? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, <laughs> Wait, you, don't, you don't have miss a meeting. Imagine. <laughs> I'd rather go to graduation. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do not. Yay. Last, usually I have two on one night, so <clears throat> I buzz up from you to Waitley or Conway or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. Your turn. Okay. Um, I just, I don't think I had brought this to your attention before about the bond threats. I, mean, I may have talked about, um, there have been, actually there were more recently. These have been primarily robo um, calls or emails. Um, but there have been over 100 on the East Coast. Um, it's frustrating for me that they haven't been able to figure out. These have been going on for months. Where the, you know, the origin of it. But there have been a couple closer to us. For the longest time, they were out in the eastern part of the state. I believe Amherst mm -hmm. has them recently. So, um, so we did discuss it again. Just going over the protocol, we followed the state police um, bomb threat protocol, and um, which is basically whoever answers the phone if it is a live person, which none of them have been, um, get as much information as possible, but contact the local police and they come in and do an assessment and you make a decision whether you do a shelter in place or a lockdown or you do an evacuation of the building. Um, and as I had gotten from the, um, uh, one of the state police officers, they said never once has there been a threat followed by an actual event. So, um, but it is frustrating that somebody can disrupt a school and a community without, you know, being caught. So I just wanted you to know that we continue to review that. Um, contract negotiations are uh, continuing and um, I'm hoping to have the elementary ones completed before we start Frontier on March 3rd. We shall see. We have a very long meeting, Greg and I, four hours on Thursday. We'll see if we're able to um, conclude <laughs> the negotiations at that point. It's been a long time because we started this back in October. But um, I certainly appreciate Greg and, and all of the other committee members for showing up and participating because it is a, a long process, but it's very much appreciated. Um, and I... I I'm continually frustrated by the uh, school choice and charter. So Patty had, had put this together because I had I sent this, these long sheets to you. Um, I sent them to Senator Rosenberg and Kulik because they've been having local meetings throughout the area wanting real data. 
about how it's affecting the schools in, um, in, in, in terms of real events. And I thought, this can't get any more real than this. These are real dollars representing real students to a school district that is considered a desirable school district. We have three to one ratio of students choosing us than leaving. But for the first time this year at Frontier, we have more dollars going out than we do coming in. And that's attributable to a couple of things. But one of the things is that the funding formula that was originally voted on for the start of charter schools was 100% reimbursement for the first time that a child left, 25% for the next five years. Governor Baker is proposing a different funding formula, but regardless of the funding formula that's proposed, they haven't fulfilled their obligation of the original formula. So when you look at, at paid one, um, now this is Frontier Regional and Union 38. It is sending school and choice charter students. So you look at where they're going to from what school. So you can see we have a total number of 139 students going out of the district. And then if you look over on the right hand side, you see the total number broken down in dollars for choice and for charter. And so I keep coming back to, if we're considered a desirable district by the state, what is this doing to districts that have the exact opposite ratio, a one to three. And my conclusion is that whether planned or just by um, unforeseen circumstances, that to me this is the demise or the attempted demise of public education. Um, it makes me sad every time you say that. I know. It, it, it makes me sad. But I can't see any other way around it. Um, and frankly, these are just <clears throat> the December projected numbers. Um, unfortunately, when the June numbers come out, we will have already had our meetings. But I'm planning on updating these in June because these don't take into consideration. It only, let me rephrase, it only takes in, into consideration children who had a sped increment in the previous year doesn't mm -hmm. so if they, if they don't have any experience with that child they could be a sped increment when we do our reporting in may and those numbers could go up so i will again do that in june and present it and probably in the september meeting if you go to the third page what you'll see there are the frontier regional and union 38 receiving so if you look at the bottom right-hand corner on the chart on the left-hand side, you'll see that we receive 327 students into our district. And then you look at the corresponding chart for the dollar amount, and you'll see the amount of revenue that we receive. And then if you look over, <clears throat> look at the town of Gil Montague and Greenfield. Between those two towns, we are receiving 210 students. Now, I do not like being in the business of competing with my neighbors. If you look at our school age attending census for this year, within our district, we had 1,660 students who could attend our school. The actual number of students, and they, they live within our four districts, our four towns. The number of students that we have actually attending our school is 1,551. Now the reason for the difference is you have many going out, not just for choice and charter, but you have homeschool. At the high school level, you have your technical school. You have private school, so there are a lot of options. If we had no choice and charter, and all we had to worry about was private school, I think financially it would be far less complicated and we'd be in far better financial shape. And we wouldn't have to worry about these ups and down fluctuations. I don't know that that's ever gonna happen. And I know, you know, as we've said before, we've met with Senator Kulik and Rosenberg over the years. Choice is not a problem 
they, they don't even know what we're talking about in the eastern part of the United States. I spoke with uh, one of the superintendent candidates today and who's from the eastern part, and she, she said, choice, we, we don't even talk about it. There is no choice. You, you don't have to think about it. It's not part of your budgeting process. So it really is affecting the western part, Berkshires, and the Cape. And you don't have as much political clout as you do in the eastern part of the state. So I've received thank yous from both the Senator and uh, Representative Kulik, and um, you know we'll keep having the conversations with them so that they look at this. Um, I would be extremely frustrated if I were losing three to one students in another district. And I don't know the, how they can ever improve. I don't know how they ever, ever can improve because the ones who are <clears throat> choosing to charter and choice are the ones who are from means, who have parents who can fill out the applications, who can drive them to the schools, who can participate in the process. And when you, when you talk about competing, like Greenfield to me, 100 kids to them is probably nothing. But 103 children from Gil Montague, that's got to be huge. Greenfield is graduating less than 100 students now. Oh, really? Yes. Their high school has become smaller. I mean, they have a brand beautiful new high school, but their numbers are, are, are much smaller. And uh, it's, it's not just, they're not just coming to Frontier Regional Union 38. They're going to other districts as well. Right. They're going to Pioneer know. has right. many more choices. Yeah. Um, to, from Greenfield than we do because of the proximity. Mohawk does, um, Mahar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're decimating these school systems. And if you're always taking the kids yeah. who have more means of some sort, the fear is the ones that are left, and I don't mean to speak disparagingly about anybody, but the ones, the students who are left are not the same students who are the ones the students who remain are not the same as the ones who left. And I think Hoyoke is a perfect example <clears throat> of that. The Hoyoke Charter School took the middle class, what was left of the middle class. The rich kids had already left. The middle class went to the Hoyoke Charter School. So all that's left in the Hoyoke Public Schools are sped, left, poor children. So I don't know, you know how to take it any further other than to keep giving people information and um, I, guess. I would advocate for the formation of charter police departments where we can have unlicensed people with <laughs> weapons. We'll take the money from the police department and we'll let them patrol the streets unlicensed and see if they can reduce crime. Fascinating comparison there, Keith. I would I like them to at least show up, and we've invited them now. Please show up at our annual town meetings. Talk well, about the competing do uh, yeah. dollars that the tech school people have to do right. and that we have to do. I think one of the, the on a more serious note is the, the idea of the <clears throat> taxation without representation. It is. I think that's the more important thing because our tax, our tax, town tax dollars are going out and there's absolutely no reporting coming back. There's nothing, there's no responsibility, mm -hmm. there's no oversight, there's nothing coming back. They are required to send their annual report. To and the I do get their annual report, but that's who it goes to. It goes to me and I read it and frankly, I don't put a whole lot of um, you know, I'm gonna, a lot of women. Yeah, well, what, I don't. there's not, there's not, I mean, what can we do with, I mean, again, we don't make that decision. We don't give them or take away the charter as towns, but we do pay right. if, if the kids leave, then we've got to pay for it. And then, you know, if, and if, 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 if the town is short on money, it doesn't come, we don't say, well, we can't give you that money to the charter school. It's like, no, the, you know, the elementary school or the, you know, the and politically the in a, doesn't get it right in an urban area. Right. You and sound I, like a very mean spirited person. If you speak out against the charter schools, because they will say there's 34,000 on the wait list. How can you deprive these poor children of a good education? Okay. Maybe in an urban area, it is very different. It, it, it doesn't work that way out here. It impacts us in a very, very different way. Well, again, well, but like, the, what's the, who children. is it? Because like, it's still, like you said, the kids <clears throat> most at risk that get left in the school that then is 
even more dysfunctional because it has even less right. resources. And that's right. what I'm saying, Doug. It's not, it's not that they have 34,000 poor kids who can't get a good education because you can get a good education in, the whole, in any public school. It's just that they choose not to take LEPs and, and SPED kids. Yeah. And again, I am... How much that costs. Yeah, I, the original mandate of the charter was to create something that is not offered in your area local schools. Right. I could not compete with the Pioneer Valley Performing Arts School. I could not compete with it with the Chinese Immersion School. I have no problem with those formations of those schools that are very particular. I still have a problem with the funding of all of them and that there is no accountability and no representation. So anyway, that's my soapbox and just that's my report. <laughs> Thanks for putting that together and sharing it with our reps. Um, okay, uh, that would be it, folks. So we uh, have our our, um, our on hearing. On the 15th. Yep, on the fifteenth of March, and I believe we've kept it at seven p.m. We haven't changed any time. I just want to make sure. The hearing is. <coughs> I thought We're we doing usually did the hearing, hearing at 6 in our meeting. And meeting well, that's what I'm now. asking about because the other towns are doing a pre-meet because they, you had an extra meeting because right. we had two meetings in February. Yep. Yep. Um, they did not have an extra meeting, so they're having a pre-meet at 6, and they're doing the hearing at 7. But I almost feel like this was a pre-meet. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to change some line items and they want to ask me about them, we might You can do that way. unless it, you said it wouldn't affect the bottom no. line. So, you can still do that in the public hearing. Well, why don't, why don't I get this, the, the lines changed, and then if you guys feel we need to have the pre-meet, we'll do that at 6 and the hearing at 7. If not, we'll do the hearing at 6 and the, our regular meeting at 7. I don't think it would take an hour to go over those no, line items. No, 6.30, yeah. Are you all right with that? If it doesn't change it's the, not bottom change the bottom line. line. I just don't know if anybody's going to have questions about why the lines changed. Can you send them out ahead of time? And oh, they I'm could planning. Ask you? I'm yeah. planning on it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But yeah. I'll try. I, I said a week before. I'll try to get it out two weeks. Be, I'll try to get it out before Donna has to post. Okay. So that they have time. All right. Well, why don't we do that? We'll keep it at seven. If you have questions, email Patty. And um, or you can e individually make an appointment and come in and talk to me as well. I can't imagine they'll be that controversial. But no. But but we, I, we still have some very new members. We still have some rookies. I bet they've come up to speed pretty quick in the they past month. They have. <laughs> but Michelle, this is your first budget process, right? Yes. Yeah. And is this well, yeah, amazing, amazing too. too. Yeah. We were actually just talking earlier how things have gotten a lot more um, easy to follow. And Good. Every meeting, you learn a little bit more. Yeah. I, I don't know well. everything by all means, but <laughs> getting there. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm trying to listen a lot more than really speak because... I don't know. I think listening is really good this year. <laughs> I think that's about, to listen. Yeah, yeah, that's about all I could do. Yeah. Learn as much as I can. I don't know. Well, I'll entertain a motion right. to adjourn if there's one. Motion to adjourn. Can second. I make a motion to adjourn? Second. You can do that. <laughs> Michelle, second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 At 8 p.m. Okay. Well, we'll see if it's snowing like crazy. It looks like it is.